Hi, in this video, uh, it's just a mock test. It's gonna take you about 20 minutes, half an hour or so to do. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions. If you're not sure of anything, always leave a message. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Okay, so on to question number one, which is a mixed number multiplication. So with these, it's uh, probably easier to convert them into top heavy or improper fractions. That becomes five over two multiplied by 13 over four. Now, the way I've done that is I've said two times two is four plus one is five, or three times four is 12 plus one is 13. And then it's really a case of multiplying across that gives me 65 over eight. And if I convert that back to a mixed number again, that's going to be eight holes. And then I've got one out of eight left and that will would be the answer to that particular question. Okay, let's move on to the second one. So it's a speed, distance and time type question. And really the easiest way to do this is to know the formula that time equals distance divided by speed. Now I do know there are different ways in which you can remember that. I normally remember it as speed equals distance over time. And then I kind of go from there. So in this particular case, we've got Akdasi drives 350 kilometers and it it's at a speed of 75. And the important thing is kilometers and kilometers, 75 kilometers per hour. So just be very careful with your units. Okay, so really the job is to know 350 divided by 35. Well, what I could do just to the side here is if I do 75 times four, what I'm actually gonna get is 300. So what I've got really is four holes and then 50 over 75 less. Left. Now that 50 over 75 will convert itself to two thirds. So we're looking at four hours and two thirds of an hour and two thirds of an hour is actually 40 minutes. So the answer would be four hours and 40 minutes. Okay, and that would be the answer to that particular question. If you're not sure about that, please add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. Okay, let's have a look at the final two questions on this side of the paper. We've got Leo bought four kilograms of oranges from the supermarket for £2.40. So when you see those sorts of questions, what we're really looking to do is to figure out the value of one kilogram, which is actually going to be 60p. So in this particular case um, he's spending 60p per kilogram so if he wants to buy five kilograms it's going to be 60 multiplied by five and that's going to give us 300 pence now 300 pence is exactly the same as saying three pounds which is the answer to question number three okay question number four uh, 79 percent. so it's one of those difficult ones um, you can either work out 10 percent and 1% and add them all up and go from there. Or what I would do personally is I would simply do the calculation of 320 multiplied by 79, because don't forget 79% is exactly the same as saying 0 0.79 as a decimal. So therefore, if I make this calculation, then I can just move the decimal point in order to make it a calculation of 0 0.79. Okay, so what we get with this is uh, nine times nothing and I'm aware people may do things slightly different to me. I've seen partitioning used for these sorts of calculations, but basically um, this is the way I would do it using this type of algorithm and I should get 25280. Now remember that 25280 is 320 times 79. So therefore it's 0 0.79. I need to move the decimal point back two places so the answer to the question is 252.8 and that would be the answer to that particular question okay so let's move on then to question number five so question number five we've got a scale um, very popular actually type questions with uh, GCSE, generally non-calculator as is most of these questions on non-calculator. So a model of a small block of flats has a vertical height of 15. So what we're basically saying is that the model is 15 centimetres and what's the actual value of the real block of flats? Well, essentially for every one centimetre, we've got 150 centimetres in real life. So so again, I'm going to do the same sort of calculation, uh, 150 multiplied by 15, because it's therefore, it's 150 times 
bigger than 15 centimeters. So therefore, uh, when I calculate that, I'm going to get uh, this sort of uh, answer, which is going to be 2. 2.50. Okay, now don't forget that that 2.250 is actually the amount of centimetres and it does ask you to give the answer in metres. So therefore, um, we need to divide by 100. The way we're going to do that is move the decimal point two places. So the actual answer to the question will be 22.5 metres. Okay, hopefully that's all right for you. Let's move on to question number six. Um, describe the single transformation that maps A onto B. Well, it's translated by a vector. It's a movement across the grid. And the easiest way of doing this is to take one of the points, doesn't matter which one, and just work out what it's actually moved by. So it's along one, two, three, four, five, six steps. So it's six, and then it's gone up one, two, two, three, four. So it's a translation by the vector six over four. Okay, hopefully that's okay for you. Let's move on then to question number seven. Question number seven is one of those questions where it can be a little bit tricky when you first look at it because it's actually 7.5 to 2.5 as a ratio. So if I put that like that, but I actually just make it 75 to 25. So in other words, I've it's exactly the same ratio, but I've just make it, made each side 10 times bigger. Uh, then hopefully you can see that actually I can reduce that to 3 to 1 because 25 will go into 75 three times. So in the form n to 1, it basically would be 3 to 1. And that's the answer to that question. I have seen that question um, kind of taking time to work through for some students. It is quite tricky, but imagine it really, if you make it 10 times bigger, it's a little bit easier. OK, on to question number eight. Uh, circle as a radius of 17 work out the area well this is one of those things i always do a little sketch it's got a radius of 17 the area of a circle equals pi r squared well that's going to be pi and the radius is 17 now remember from bid mass you need to do the 17 squared first so you multiply 17 by 17 either using a calculator or just using a natural you know normal uh, multiplication and that's going to give you 289 pi. However, in this particular one, it says give your answer correct to one decimal place. So if I multiply this on a calculator, I'm going to get 907.9202. So to one decimal place is going to be 907.9 centimeters squared. And that would be the answer to question number six. Okay, we're about halfway through on these type of questions. So please do stop the video. Have a go at each of these questions and then compare your solutions. So the next one is n is an integer. So in other words, n is a whole number such that it appears to be on a number line greater than or equal to minus four, less than or equal to two. So actually I could, if I wanted to, just draw a very brief, very quick number line. That's minus four, minus three minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two. And then you might recall that when you're showing um, inequalities, if it includes, you fill in the little circle. So in other words, what we're saying on this is the value of n could be minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, or two. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, let's move on then to question number 10. Samir and Harreen have some money in the ratio of 5 to 3. So Samir gets £60 more. But let's have a look at how it is at the moment. So we've got Samir and Harreen have some money in the ratio of 5 to 3. So basically, if they shared £8, uh, Samir would get £5 and Harreen would get three pounds but importantly the difference between the two is actually two pounds okay on that basis of the ratio however not according to the question according to the question it's actually 60 pounds more so therefore it's multiplied by 
30 to become 60 pounds more and this is the important point and really with these type of questions you need to figure this out somehow and sometimes it's a difference or sometimes it's a number but basically you need to figure this out because effectively everything then becomes 30 times bigger so if I multiply 5 by 30 I get 150 and if I multiply 3 by 30 I get 90 and hopefully you can see the difference between the two is actually 60 pounds okay so so um, the amount of money that Harine gets is actually going to be 90, but just for the sake of the video, I'm going to put that Samir gets 150 and Harine gets uh, 90 pounds, which is the answer to that particular question. Okay, let's move on then to question number 11. Uh, there are 65 counters in a bag, 11 of the counters are yellow, the rest are green. One of the counters are taken around. Let's find out how many are green. So basically, we're saying that 65 take away 11 will give you the amount of green counters, which is 54. So the probability that the counter is green if you take it out of the bag is going to be 54 out of the total amount of counters which is 65 that's the answer to that question very very straightforward that one okay so let's have a look then finally at question number 12 or finally on this sheet question number 12 which is abc is an isosceles calculate the perpendicular height so by perpendicular height what we basically mean is this height here where this is 90 degrees now there's a couple of ways of doing this you could use a particular technique which some people would know as Sarkatoa. And it's interesting that they've actually given you this 40 degrees, so therefore you could use one of those ratios. However, perhaps a simpler way of doing it is to use Pythagoras uh, to basically say that if we have Pythagoras, I'll just make a note there, OK, you'd get the same answer either way, whichever uh, system you used or whichever um, method you used. But basically, we've got a base here of five centimetres because it's going to be half of this length here. And we've got a height here or a slant height here of 22 centimetres. So what I can do is I can use that information as Pythagoras and I can work out this height. Now I'm very aware that some people will use c squared equals a squared plus b squared. I personally tend to use a squared equals b squared plus c squared. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever works for you. Um, in this particular case I tend to make c squared, uh, a squared the hypotenuse but I have seen it used both ways. Um, and providing at the end of the day you get the same answer, then I don't suppose it really matters. OK, so C squared is going to be 459. If I then square root that, I'm going to get that C equals oh something very long, 21.4242. 4 to 8, okay, and to three significant figures, it's going to be 21.4 centimetres to three significant figures, as per the question. Okay, so we're moving on at a fairly good pace. Let's have a look then at the final two questions, which one of which is a bearings question, which are very popular, particularly again with non calculator type questions. So we've got the bearing of Leeds from Liverpool is 112. So if you can imagine, you're in Liverpool. Uh, here's Liverpool, okay, and Leeds is going to be down here somewhere, okay. And what we're saying is this bearing here is 112 degrees. And what we're saying then, or the question is, what's the bearing of Liverpool from Leeds? So, in other words, if you're standing in the middle of Leeds, where would Liverpool be? Well, basically, it would be this bearing here because all bearings are north clockwise. So the easiest way of doing this is by using corresponding angles because effectively this part of it is also 112 degrees and then this is a straight line which is 180 so therefore Liverpool from Leeds is going to be a total bearing of 112 plus 180, which is the straight line at the bottom, and that's going to give you 292 degrees, which would be the answer to the question. OK, let's move on to the final bit now. This is a frequency table. I have included this also on the previous test 
that I did. Um, I just thought they were kind of useful to do uh, a little bit of practice on these. So really what we're saying is, is that we've got students who are uh, taking time to complete their maths homework. Okay, so this is six students. The average student here is 10 minutes, which is halfway between the two because we use the midpoint with these frequency tables. And they're very helpfully given as a spare column, frequency times midpoint, which is going to be six multiplied by 10, which is going to be 60. And basically what we say is that every student achieves the midpoint here. Now, some will achieve less, some will achieve more, but basically you're going to get all of them achieving a midpoint level. Okay, so when you've done that, that will then give you the ability to calculate the total time that all the students took. And if you remember, in order to um, calculate the mean, what we're looking at is going to be the total divided by the number. Okay, now the number of students is 30, and the total amount of time they all took together was 855. So therefore, if we divide one by the other, we get 855 divided by 30, which is going to equal 28. 0.5 minutes. So 28 and a half minutes is the average or the mean time that students took to complete their maths homework. Okay, all right. So let's have a look at B then. It says, explain why it's an estimate. Well, as I mentioned before, it's an estimate because we don't know the exact time of every single student because all of the data is grouped. Okay, so I'm terribly sorry about my writing here. So if I write in here, we don't know know uh, the exact time um, all the data is grouped okay all right so sorry about my writing here but hopefully that's okay you could if you wanted to say something like we've uh, used the midpoint of each class width OK, and that would be absolutely fantastic and you would definitely get a mark for that. OK, I hope that's been useful for you. Please do add a comment if you're not sure about anything. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.